Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansi. Senators met Wednesday, combining a session and a committee of the whole hearing to address a number of issues. One thing that was not discussed was the revised Hovenza agreement because it wasn't properly ordered on the agenda. News is Erica Parsons has more. After a late start and much deliberation Wednesday morning, Senate President Sean Michael Malone announced that the session's agenda would not include action on the revised Hovensa agreement up for consideration. If the agreement is the same and it was already considered, it's the manner in which we are seeking to put it on the agenda today in accordance with the rules. It's outside of the rules, so there, there must be a special order in order to be, for this to be appropriately on, on the agenda for today. After receiving conflicting legal advice, as a presiding officer, the item regarding the Hovensa agreement is not properly placed on the agenda I will schedule a committee of the whole with ample notice. The original bill was rejected by Senators August 7th, and last week Governor DeYoung presented Senators with a modified version. While in session Wednesday, the body moved to override several bills recently vetoed by Governor DeYoung. Those bills included Bill 30-17 that sought to create a single-payer utility fund. Bill 30-45 that created two distinct classes of peace officers and Bill 30-117 that would give peace officer status to probation officers of the VI Superior Court and enforcement officers from the VI's Waste Management Authority. The body then moved from a session to a committee of the whole hearing where they heard testimony from the election's leadership on why the election's calendar dates needed to be changed. The body moved back to a session where they voted unanimously to change the dates of the primary election and the preceding calendar dates after to be in compliance with the federal mandate of the Military and Overseas Voter Empowerment Act. Erica Parsons, News 2. The 30th legislature was also scheduled to consider the omnibus bill vetoed by the governor last week. Governor DeYoung took issue with sections of the bill but said he would reconsider it with revisions. A former head of Juan Louis Hospital was found dead in his stateside home Tuesday. Reports are that Jeff Nelson, the former CEO of the Juan Louis Hospital, died of an apparent gunshot wound. Nelson was serving as the president of the Northwestern Health Sciences University in Minnesota since April. Prior to that, he was at the helm of the St. Croix Hospital since January 2011. Nelson was brought in as a turnaround specialist for the struggling hospital and was able to help the hospital increase its revenues during his tenure. Nelson was criticized for his decision to terminate more than 80 nurses at the hospital and under mountain pressure resigned his position in January this year. No other details were available about Nelson's death. Classes at the university were canceled Tuesday in his honor. Governor John DeYoung and wife Cecile offered their prayers and condolences to Nelson's family during this difficult time. The Coast Guard recently announced the seizure of $34 million worth of cocaine shipment. Coast Guard Sector San Juan, along with federal and local law enforcement partners, announced at an at-sea drug interdiction on October 18th, south of St. Croix. A Coast Guard craft interdicted a go-fast with a 25 bales of cocaine on board and apprehended three drug smugglers. Smugglers were turned over to Customs and Border Protection officers, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, Homeland Security Investigations, and Drug Enforcement Administration Special Agents in Ponce, Puerto Rico. The interdiction was a result of a multi-agency law enforcement effort in support of the Coast Guard's Operation Unified Resolve, the Caribbean Border Interagency Group's Operation Caribbean Guard, and the U.S. Department of Justice Caribbean Corridor Strike Force. Police on St. Thomas are investigating a reported carjacking in which a rental car was taken while a passenger was still in the car. No one was injured during this crime. Here's more. The victim told officers at the Richard Cowood Zone A command that on October 20th at about 2.30 a.m., she stopped her rental car which had the license number TEL316 near an open business on 
Omicron Princeton's Gata and went inside to use the restroom. The driver left the keys in the ignition and a male passenger in the front seat. When she returned, the passenger told her that a male with a black handgun told him to get out of the vehicle and then drove away with the vehicle in an eastward direction. Police issued an all points bulletin on the vehicle and this case is under active investigation by the Criminal Investigation Bureau detectives. Earlier this month, a memorandum of understanding between the government and VI Housing Authority led to the relocation of the Mariel C. Newton Command Station, which was officially reopened and rededicated during a ceremony Monday on St. Thomas. Earlier this month, a memorandum of understanding between the government and the VI Housing Authority led to the relocation of the Mariel C. Newton Command Station, which was officially reopened and rededicated during a ceremony Monday morning on St. Thomas. I'd like to thank um, Assistant Commissioner Gazelle Jones and Housing Authority Modernization Director Lydia Hughes for the work that they have done in working with the police construction unit to make this facility workable for the police. Today, the Housing Authority is appreciative of Governor John DeYoung's vision and Commissioner Karad's courage to take an old approach of having a housing police unit with temporary funding to a timely strategy of having an entire command integrated with housing through community policing. This new strategy is a comprehensive approach and it establishes a meaningful partnership. The command station was located in Four Winds, but has moved to the Housing Authority's offices near the Seventh-day Adventist School in a state Anna's retreat. Mr. Graham and I have been back and forth, literally back and forth, for a period of time, you know, trying to expedite this process and get it to where it is today. A working zone, a good zone, a comfortable zone for the people, the officers, of course, who are working here, and also for the people, especially on the east end of St. Thomas. It is, it is, as you can tell, it was well worth it. It took some time. It took a little longer than I wanted because I wanted this to happen about three months ago, but still, better late than never. Officials say police department rent space in other communities run by the Housing Authority for the purpose of implementing community policing. Thank you to the family of Mariel C. Newton for being here and for the honor of putting her name on this rededication of this facility. Even though this is the relocation and the rededication of the Mariel C. Newton facility, I think it is very interesting that this is named after her. A police officer, the Department of Public Safety, the first woman, someone that was instrumental in the naming of a youth center at a time when youth in our community are so important in each and everything that we do. From remembering Mr. Brathwaite, who will be laid to rest very shortly, to other young people in our community that we have to embrace. A lady who in 1963 attended the National Governors Association Conference on Juvenile Violence at a time again when we're dealing with issues of violence in our community. It helps you to understand that there are connections and ways that this world is round in so many ways. Meanwhile, police are still actively investigating cases throughout the territory and they're asking for the community's support in solving these crimes. Remember, if your tip leads to an arrest or the recovery of stolen property, illegal drugs, or weapons, you will receive a cash reward of up to $2,500 to be paid according to your instructions. News News' Janika Robinson has your latest Crime Stoppers report. Between Tuesday, October 15th and Friday, October 18th, three robberies occurred on the island of St. Croix. A couple was robbed of cash and jewelry on Thursday at 9.15 p.m. by two males in the Dorch Beach area. On Thursday about midnight, three armed males robbed patrons at a bar on Midland Road. The three wore masks and camouflage clothing and fled the scene in a white vehicle. Then early Friday at about 4.25 a.m., a couple was robbed of their vehicle, cash and jewelry in the Atona Lagoon area by two masked men, armed individuals, driving a light-colored vehicle. Help put an end to these assaults and robberies by telling us what you know. On St. John, on Saturday, October 12th, just before midnight, a green four-door Jeep Cherokee tag, JEN447, was left parked in the area of the Lime Inn in Cruz Bay. The driver returned on Sunday shortly after the noon hour and discovered the vehicle had been stolen. Prior to that, at about 6 a.m., the vehicle had been found overturned in the area of Gift Hill with no driver present. Tell us what you know about this automobile theft and subsequent accident.
and on St. Thomas on Monday, October 14th at about 2.10 a.m., officers were dispatched to a call for shots fired at Cookie Point Beach. Upon arrival, officers discovered that a male and female had been shot and killed. A second male victim was shot in a leg. Help police determine who the shooter or shooters were and why this shooting occurred. Let's continue to help make our community a safer place by submitting information on these or any other crimes at www.crimestoppersusvi.org or simply calling 1-800-222-8477. Shaniqua Robinson, News 2. Well, the problems with the healthcare.gov website have been widespread and well documented, frustrating consumers, lawmakers, and the president. But there are some people who have managed to sign up. Danielle Nottingham reports from Washington. Single mother Virginia Lindahl wasn't going to let a slow website keep her from getting health care coverage. It required some patience, but um, I waited nine years for affordable health care and waiting a few more days was fine with me. Lindahl was part of the first rush of applicants when healthcare.gov launched. The psychologist who owns her own practice took her time completing small parts of the registration process. A week later, she was signed up. Not everyone has had Lindahl's success and Republican lawmakers want the Obama administration to explain why hundreds of millions of dollars were spent on a website that doesn't work. The rollout of Obamacare is nothing short of a debacle. And the American people are now fearful of their health care. CBS News has learned the site's new shop and browse feature often gives applicants a cheaper estimate because consumers don't enter their exact age. Virginia Lindahl is glad she was persistent with the site. Yes, it's frustrating. Wait and come back in a week. It will be worth it. Lindahl estimates she will save nearly $15,000 a year with her new coverage. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Washington. And keeping our eye on the economy, FedEx is forecasting a stronger holiday shipping season. The company expects to carry more than 22 million shipments on its busiest day, which it believes will be Monday, December 2nd. FedEx also expects to hire about 20,000 seasonal workers. Slightly more than last year. This is the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank Stock Market Watch. Everything down. The Dow 54, Nasdaq 22, S&P 8. Coming up on News 2, the Enterprise Zone Commission, a division of the Virgin Islands Economic Development Authority, is inviting the general public of Christiansted to view and select the proposed town plans developed for the revitalization of Christiansted on St. Croix, plus more ways you can give your input. We'll be right back. Senator Terrence Nelson would like to invite the community to a town hall meeting on Thursday, October 24th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the St. Croix Educational Complex. The purpose of the meeting is to educate the public on the benefits of his legislation, Bill Number 30-0018, which is an act to reduce penalties for the possession of small amounts of marijuana to fines rather than imprisonment. Senator Nelson will have a representative, Joanne Naughton, who is a former 20-year police officer, lieutenant, and attorney from New York. Ms. Naughton will testify on the legislation and educate the VI community on why her organization supports reducing and eradicating penalties for individuals who are found with marijuana. The community is urged to come out and hear the facts, statistics, and benefits of this legislation. The Enterprise Zone Commission, a division of the Virgin Islands Economic Development Authority, is inviting the general public of Christiansted to view and select the proposed town plans developed for the revitalization of Christiansted St. Croix. These proposed town plans will be on display from October 23rd to the 26th and November 6th to the 9th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Steeple Building in Christiansted St. Croix, which is part of the National Park Service's Christiansted National Historic Site. Attendees will be allowed to view the proposed town plans designed by local architects that have been submitted for the community's consideration. The town plan that received the most votes will be selected as the official Christiansted town plan. Also, the Virgin Islands Department of Agriculture has teamed up with several government agencies to plan the revitalization of the Christian Hendricks Market in Christiansted, St. Croix. The revitalization effort will be celebrated with a series of market events beginning on Saturday, October 26th and continuing every Saturday thereafter. 
Residents are urged to attend the inaugural event on October 26, which begins at 8 a.m. Persons interested in selling local produce and other agricultural commodities, you're asked to call Ms. Audrey Brown. And the number is 778-0998, extension 228, to reserve a space. Fees will be waived for the first six months. We'll be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.